T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Midheaven Podcast. My name is Candice Marie. My name is the Peace Dealer. Thank you for joining us. We're back. I'm not going to tell you what number it is because I knew and I forgot and I screwed up every time. But I promise you that we're getting up there. We're somewhere in the 30s. Mm -hmm. We're somewhere up there. We're reaching uh, more maturity, learning adult lessons now. I'm working on it. We're trying. I don't think we're going to figure it out until we're like 42. I'm but. going over the mistakes we made in our 20s and we're better people. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like they're getting better. They're getting better as we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I agree. We had our classics. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the best is still yet to come. I was like watching True. some of the, some of the, the clips that could have been promo clips, but they probably shouldn't be because some of the stuff that came out of my mouth was very inappropriate. I don't even have hey. a dick and if I was the president, I'd be like, blow me. Oh, like, I like missionary. I want you to look me in the eyes and just beat the pussy up. I think the more inappropriate, the better, but. I feel like it could be a lot worse, but I have to like, one person has to be the villain. I'll let it be you. Oh, nice. And you know, her, her, Hermes and Hades, shout out to uh, Dave Chappelle <laughs> for getting canceled again. Oh. Congratulations. But did he though? Because <coughs> I saw that Netflix made a statement that they came out and basically said that they were like, they weren't going to remove it. I thought they weren't going to rem remove it. They said it. that? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to fact check this. Hold on. <coughs> I put canceled in quotes because um, he said himself that he, he personally loves the feeling of it. He loves it. All the transgender stuff that he, all the comments he made about that? Yeah. Or what? Something uh, like that. Oh, in fact, Netflix suspended the employee who tweeted about him. So they got Dave's back. That's why. Netflix Chief Ted Serenados defends controversial Dave Chappelle stand up. I didn't know that was his last special, too. Well, he said the last one for a while. Okay. It's interesting because I actually... His last Netflix special, my bad. I went to that show live that. when it was here in Vegas. Future, oh, the, you saw that? I was the there. The closer? I was there. We're going to insert a photo of me right here. You're so see they a filmed that a while ago then? It's a couple months ago. Oh, It's a couple weird. months ago. I mean, I don't know if this That's is... Awesome. I don't know if the one that they shot in Vegas was the one that was the special, but mm -hmm. I did see that particular episode or that, I guess, that show... Um, he chain smoked through the whole thing. I loved it. I didn't know Dave Chappelle chain smoked. I love him so much more now. Maybe he doesn't, but just given everything that's going on, but uh, maybe he does, obviously. I mean, I guess I see, I see both sides of the situation. I'm not going to like get into like whether or not what he said was, you know, defendable. Um, but you know, cause then I'll get canceled and being a white female in today's climate, I have to be careful with what I say, so all I'm going to say is this. What I do the think irony. is... The irony. What is, what <laughs> is interesting... I mean, at least I acknowledge it. I can't even call it white privilege, because it's not white privilege. It's just white shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, that's really what it is. Here's what I will say. Here's what oh, I will I say. It. Whether it's Dave Chappelle or a lot of other um, comics, a lot of comics have come out in the last year or so and, and really kind of said, like, in today's culture, cancer, cancel culture. Cancer culture. Well, that too. Yeah. 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 The cancel culture is a cancer. I'll say that. <laughs> In that and the fact that just like everybody is so hypersensitive and you have a bunch of like social justice warriors, like comedians, I think the reason why they have been able to maintain like their status in the entertainment world is that they're constantly pushing the envelope of what is and is not socially acceptable to say, mm -hmm. right? And obviously there's lines, but essentially like the whole point of comedy is coming out there and like more or less saying things and poking fun at things. And pushing and the boundaries. Pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. of, you know, I mean, I always say like, it's not stereo, it's like stereotyping, right? Like kind of stereotyping, but not, it's, it's, it's just quickly kind of sorting through groups of people. So I'm just gonna leave right. it at that. Or blatant stereotyping. And funny enough to laugh at, at least even if we know that it's not fully true, that's part of why it's funny. But if we like, can't laugh at ourselves and if we can't learn to right. take a joke as easily as some people take a dick, in, in, we're gonna get to a point where it's just like, we're not gonna be able to say anything. What can you even say at this point, right? That's uh, why we started this fucking podcast yeah. because 
at least in my opinion. That's why I was just kind of like, we need something that's like astrological, but not super stuffy where we can kind of get hammered, but still <laughs> talk about things that matter because what the world needs right now is humor. Right. So with, with the whole Dave Chappelle thing, I mean, come on, dude, like they probably paid him so much money for this special, especially considering the fact that Dave Chappelle got fucked by what, what was it Comedy Central or was it Netflix? Comedy Central. It was Comedy Central, yeah. right? Where they turned around and then they sold rights to his show and he like didn't get a cut of it or something. So, some, something like that happened. Damn. And I don't know if it was that Comedy Central sold rights to it to like another streaming network, something along those lines. So for Dave Chappelle to even come back, right? After mm -hmm. what's been like a hiatus and he went on his whole like Africa trip and kind of lost it and then came back, like Dave Chappelle has still got it. Mm. No, I mean, and that makes me like the consistency of Virgo. Like, yeah. that's why I feel like they're the masters because not only does he still have got it, it's Asian like fine wine, and like, you know, it's 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 amazing how each special he pushed the envelope a little bit more. Well, his SNL open that he did also that was like 10, 15 minutes long also was really interesting a couple of months back where. Everything he came out and he said was just like some hard truths that I feel like was really refreshing. Yeah. And, you know, I look at like movies and things that were coming out like in the early, you know, 2000s and even in the 90s. Like if you look at some of the rom-coms and the things that were happening, nowadays you can't get away with half of that shit. That's so true. Between the Me Too movement and yeah. cancel culture and all kinds of stuff, like people are afraid to... Mm -hmm push the envelope right and so we're kind of getting to a point not just in the entertainment world but also here at least in the states where it's like we're inching closer and closer to losing the freedom of speech and once we get to that point it's like there's no turning back because mm -hmm. then we're going to be silenced and people are going to be controlling the narrative and we're going to start to lose the opportunity to be outspoken and curious and ask questions and challenge things and also like which is gonna, it's already happening and the only positive side to that is now speech will be taboo. And once it's taboo, it's just gonna be like any other thing that's taboo. Questioning gonna... things is taboo right now. Exactly. Which is really fucking scary because questioning things, I posted that the other, right. it was yesterday or today on my social media, it was like, questioning things shouldn't be so taboo. Or it depends on who questions things. Being like curious is a it. natural part of it's being intelligent and like being Discovery. able to understand and break things down and learn and ask questions. Critical and if you're not thing. doing that, then you're not practicing critical thinking. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, I'm just really irked about the state of the world right now. But I, I, I like it because it'll motivate people to rebel against that. Should that ever happen, that's just going to make more people do it now, knowing that what they're doing is taboo and illegal. And it's like now to be more revolutionary. But I mean, it's it's still really fascinating because Dave Chappelle has Neptune opposite his son. So it's familiar. It's, it reminds me of Cat Williams, who's face in transit backlash. right now in transit. Yeah, my bad. He has transiting Neptune yeah. opposite his natal son. So I'm watching the Leos right now, like Tory Lanez is getting hemmed up in, in law because he got Saturn opposite. And I'm watching the Virgos because, you know, they're, they're dropping the facts and it's interesting to see how they're going. I, I think even Russell Brand got backlash because of his coverage on everything and i respect him so much because he identifies as a liberal like he, i'm really a, a big a recent fan of um his stuff i've never been too crazy about him because i feel like he went through this whole like weird like ego thing and like all the shit that was going on with him and like katy perry and then i was just kind of like disgusted but recently like maybe in the last year the last or so or watching his um yeah. content and like i feel like it's kind of scary when you consider russell brand to be one of the most truthful and honest forthcoming journalists on the internet i right said now. that literally this morning okay. i was like what how yeah, did yeah. russell brand become more credible than like so many mainstream it's an, outlets well it's and that's the future of where we're going <laughs> Right. Right? Neptune and Aries, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, Katy man. Perry, Russell Brand, oh, Scorpio, Jeremy, right. <laughs> no, but, like, it's, it's wild because it is the future. What you, what you see with James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. Oh, is, Project Veritas. See, and people are going to think I'm a hardcore conspiracy theorist, but I've gone down that rabbit hole. Infowars, I'm still on the fence because I feel like he pushes way too much product for me personally. Right. But, but he's a brand, so. But there's something to say about that. But it's right. like, I feel like um, I'm seeking 
media and like all these like independent people who are just kind of like let's just talk about the shit that the mainstream media is not covering and she said it independent so neptune's gonna go from pisces to aries where it's gonna go from this collective mainstream narrative that's broadcast to project veritas individually you get run up by anybody I'm living with a for that shit that's what the it's, news it's is gonna, gonna be it's like. gonna be a bunch of like raw like live yes. streams like we heard you said this yesterday any comment oh you're oh running away like, it's gonna some be of fire. the shit they're posting i mean just bomb <laughs> after bomb yes. and they went in and they did like undercover interviews basically with Scientists. scientists who work for the pharmaceutical companies that are producing the vaccine, which is really interesting because yeah. some of the stuff they said was just downright, and I'm not speculating whether it's true or false. I'm just going off of the video that I watched that they put out there that was of the undercover Because it's one thing to have an undercover interview of just like one of us pretending right. to be scientists, but you could actually like verify they were. And they have like so just, four like, of them. Yeah. Four separate interviews. Uh, you got to assume, though, the, the the girls in those videos are just, like, smoking hot. Right? <sighs> they have to be. Okay. Because they just, like, walk up to these, like, scientists and they're, like, out and having oh, lunch right. or dinner. Okay, the ones and they who sit are down and talk the to them. And you can true. see, because of, like, the, the camera, like, the angle. Like, right. They're sitting there asking them questions. And they ha they drop some real truth bombs. If you haven't seen it. They have to it, be smoking hot. Because to give away that information right. for someone, you probably just... So, like, like, one it. of the scientists was just like, yeah, like, you probably shouldn't be vaccinating your kids. Like, literally, that's what it said in the video. Then they went as far as saying... Yeah, you know, like, you know, wait, they, like they had said, wait on getting it or that, you know, your antibodies or whatever are probably going to be better than going and getting this stuff. So to see that visually come from. And then also them saying, oh, I signed an NDA, so please don't. Yeah, you know, there has just, to be some smoking hot chicks with some big, t big titties. Oh, <laughs> like, yo. In the, in the, in the trenches, getting the, getting the deets. I don't know. It, it just makes That's me kind of, like, wonder, like. Just the whole state of the world and the things that are going on right now. It um, very poodle cap, very exposing. You know the higher level. But, but it's shit that's been going on since fucking 2019. Like since these yeah. conjunctions were building, it, it, and that's what I love about astrology, like politics, and like you know all these conspiracy theories aside. The fact that you can look at the stars and, and see the aspects timing. and see what's building, like that doesn't lie. And you know. Once again, on on the other side, like we can see all these theories, we can see everything that's being said, and be and see over time which came true, which is still the a theories, theory, right? Because a year you know, ago, you know, passports were a theory. The fact that it was going to control yeah. whether or not we could go out and participate in the public was a theory. Whether or not there was going to be mandates that's was a true. theory. All what of that. I mean, whether uh, it was a lab leak was a theory, but it was all confirmed. So. I mean, without making this too much about, you know, the Rona and everything, uh, it's, it's, I think what's important is the shift of how we're going to see, like, broadcasting be more wild, be more raw, be more I independent, so. and, and really, you know, put everyone in check, and, and, you know, once again, like, there's so much, there's so much information being put out there, regardless of side, where whether you believe in it or not, we got to hold them all accountable to what's true, and, and just like we've seen a, a bunch come through true, it'd be interesting to see next year how much more it is or not just so we could see you know just, just so uh because the goal is to divide people right get people to be arguing over right. what's what and we, we got to see through that and thankfully i think we're headed there i think coming into next year jupiter ending the cycle will just with the pisces put everything i full can't circle, wait to see jupiter it. go into aries even if it's I can't wait. but it is it's brief. it's gonna go in and then it's gonna retrograde and really i think quickly. it's only gonna be at like 28 it'll go retrograde back to 28 or 29 degrees of pisces right before then so it starts really moving fast. back into aries and then we're gonna have saturn getting ready to move oh. into uh pisces as well so certainly 2023 is gonna be a very oh interesting year but yes. i think more than anything, and like, God, I've just been thinking about this like so much this week, especially since like, you know, we talked about um, recently in the last couple of videos, Biden's chart, you and I have also spoken about the United States chart and ultimately yeah. that would, what would be coming in the coming months would be um, the Pluto return, building into the situation where we're really analyzing like, what does Pluto at 27 degrees mean? Does it mean that we have to carry a document. Are we still governing the United States with the Constitution? What are we upholding? What are we not? And we're going to have Pluto conjunct Mars conjunct Venus. March. Together. March, 2022. Right? We March of 2022. Like 
I feel like I'm, wow. and maybe you guys can like leave me recommendations. Like I know there's like Rumble and there's like a couple other platforms, but I feel like very, and you've experienced this more than me. I haven't experienced this. Like on my channel, I'm very kind of like cookie cutter. You know, this is the astrology. I don't want to get too political about right. stuff, but I feel very like tied down. Like mm -hmm. I, I can't, I don't feel safe on YouTube. Like, I don't feel like I can go on YouTube and just be like, hey, it's a revolution, like, resist. I can't right. do that. I'd no. like to. Maybe this maybe this is the opportunity the for me to start. The thing with YouTube is it's really weird, too, because, like, the video I got striked, I had other videos that went against their guidelines, but they didn't take it down. So, like, I didn't even this is know. A, this is a recent development, though, what they're doing. Okay, well... Okay. Well, I, I, as far as like the, the the recent recent updates with what they're taking down for sure, it just it really confused me because it's like basically what YouTube let me know is that they can take down any video down for any reason and just kind of give you whatever, even if it doesn't go against their guidelines exactly. So it's exactly what she said. Like it, it doesn't give me a safe feeling to just freely express myself, but it at least also gives me an idea of what platform I'm working on and maybe how to slowly but surely reach out to other platforms or really what the goal of this is we have the saturn and aquarius that collective restriction mainstream platforms uranus and taurus is pushing you to create your own platform take that 10-year grind to take your own social media site to take your own video site and grow it over time and make your own monopoly uh, and ultimately that's like the only way right and I, it's interesting because when i started thinking about like social media because when I started, you know, maybe 2014, you know, getting on Instagram and creating an Instagram, like everything that I've done has been like super like, you know, like organic. Like I never paid for promotion. I never promoted my page. I just focused on creating content, Same talking here. about what right. I wanted to talk about. And now I'm looking at it like, fuck, like social media platforms in a way are a lot like a virus. Like ultimately it's just going to like expand and then it's gonna die off. Kind of like how Facebook almost did until they bought Instagram. Yeah. And TikTok's a thing right now and like all that shit. But I keep thinking in the back of my mind, like at some point this is gonna be something that's like weaponized against society, making it harder to share information and actually come together and unite and, you know, really change, um, kind of like the status quo. You know, we've heard so much about like division in um, at least a lot in the United States. I know what's going on in the world. You guys have to understand, those of you guys who are international, our news is so different from your news. We don't often see what's going on in That's the rest so of the true. world. We don't, it doesn't make headlines here. We have to go digging for it. We have to look. We're not gonna find it in mainstream Gotta media. Get different VPNs yeah. in different countries. Yeah, it's just like the narrative here is crazy, but like <sighs> I think about, I mean, and you just recently traveled. Mm -hmm. I went from Vegas to New Orleans back in May and I was pretty much on a road trip for a little bit over two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks. And it was interesting to like go from the Southwest to the South and then back because I saw nothing but like kind people People were very genuine. They were very sweet. People were willing to share, communicate, interact, socialize. It didn't seem freaky or like people were afraid or people were divided. And it was like very refreshing for me to see that given the narrative of what the media has really pushed over the past year and a half of we're afraid, everybody's sick, it's rough out there, stay in your home, so talk to your neighbors. <laughs> like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I'm starting to kind of think about where I'm getting my information from and True like that. whether or not the narrative is really real and if this is being orchestrated to actually um, keep people from coming together. And here's the best part about that because cyclically, and what I love what, what you say, Candice, is we're going to find that out next year. This Virgo season gave us the, the reality about the narrative and then next year is going to really just close it out. And I'm, I think a lot of us are going to be saying we told you so, but, and it's weird. I think everyone on all sides will have that claim, but it's all going to connect and see how, you know, we were all deceived and we're all breaking through that. I love that you say that too. Like when you talk about all connecting, because, you know, right now we've got a little bit longer, the South Node is in Sagittarius here, yeah. maybe for another couple of weeks. Um, and we're releasing and like letting go this sense of like, the bigger picture, or the worldly view, really the change that's taking place right now that needs to take place globally starts very much on a community 
um, close knit, like your close day to day um, kind of communities, right? Like your friends, your family, your your network, your small town that you're in, the people who you interact with when you go to the store, things like that. That's the North Node in Gemini. Very so true. there is a need for us to start focusing on a personal level asking questions, communicating, sharing ideas. Bring it back so, to basics too. Yeah, and it's just, man, I don't know. <laughs> I get like really kind of like freaked out, like thinking about things, but then I kind of like look at it and go like, well, this wouldn't be happening unless there was like a real need for like people to wake up, right? No, yeah, and, and that's that's the cool thing. Shout out to Stefan Arneo who, who passed away before all this happened, but he mentioned the cyclical uh, nature of how you know before civilization maybe like a 150 250 year span before civilization uh, goes up and down and he I think he referenced the last few wars and we're coming back around here and it's in his book called Sh hard times make strong men and I, I kind of like that it's interesting somebody else was talking about that book no way yeah yeah one of my yeah. teachers was talking about that book yeah so so yeah I got it I just haven't read it yet but I did buy it Okay. A long time I'm, ago. I'm, I'm going to add that to my list, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that and just, like, you know, next year, like, Jupiter coming into conjunction with Neptune, like, on a very literal level, it makes me think about the fact that maybe the separateness is the illusion when in reality, when everybody is pulling away and taking time to consciously connect to source energy or to their higher self, whether that's sleeping better, painting, meditating, um, you know, giving to those in need, realizing that in reality, the separation is the illusion mm -hmm. that we actually will level up in terms of our um, consciousness and I'm I hoping. Think, I think that's what internet memes have really helped with because they, they show us how much we can relate to the smallest of things. Thank you, Pluto and Sag. <laughs> oh my God, yes, Pluto Sag. So we are going to credit Pluto Sag for a little I mean, I would, yeah. That's what's up. I don't feel like millennials, like, even though, like, we're sad pieces of shit. It's kind of weird to be like, I'm a millennial, so therefore I'm fucking old, but apparently oh that's God. the case. But, like, I don't know, like, Gen Z and, like, the Pluto and Sag people like breaking stereotypes from like gender mm -hmm. to like all kinds of like social statuses to like, yeah, they just really genuinely don't give a fuck. Like they just want to watch the world burn. And I kind of being a sun Pluto myself, I kind of admire that because I look at that and I'm like, wow, you guys all kind of like, especially like the rappers. Have you noticed yeah. like the Gen Z rappers? Like, like a lot of them, they just, they all look like comic book villains. Uzi Vert, yeah. They all, like all of them. Yeah, they do. They all look Holy like shit. the Joker. And I'm That's just, crazy. I'm super fucking here for it. The, like well, now that you mention, I'm not ever going to see him again the same, but it's so true. <laughs> all of them. They all yeah. look like the Joker. And Holy when I crap. say the Joker, I mean like the... Or like um, a comic book villain or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they all do. And it's it's just, I'm, I'm loving it. I love that you can be somebody who's like hyper uber real and you look like you just got out of prison and your hair is like the color of like a highlighter oh and you God. don't give a fuck if you're like living in like a den and right. you just do your thing that's what's kind of separating the the gen zers from the millennials because the millennials still really give a fuck about like their eight dollar coffee and their house plants and still paying off for student loans oh my god yeah screw that <laughs> 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 oh god yeah i mean the aftermath of everything is just so fascinating because we are legitimately on that precipice no we really are like everything's just whoosh. like if you guys thought like 2020 was like a year of like plot twists like 2021 mm -hmm. just keeps on keeping on and mm -hmm. one thing that i've been noticing in the news recently we were talking about it a little bit earlier we talked in um, previous podcast episodes kind of about the changes that are coming with November and that we were going to see like the sun square Uranus and all these planet aspects. Like as we're recording this now, it's actually mid-October. So by the time you guys are seeing this, a lot of these things have already taken place. But some of like, you know, the union strikes that are going on right now right. and all of the crazy shit that's been going on with like the airlines and like Southwest um, and how Southwest is basically made an idiot of themselves on social media right. and all over the place being like oh we're having weather delays when in reality 
you've got like thousands of employees that are being pressed to get the V. Wow. And um, calling in sick or using their PTO or all that stuff. Which is wild because they, they try to make it look the op opposite way too. I thought Southwest was one of the only airlines that wasn't like mandating it or forcing it. Well, just because they say we're not going to fire people who haven't gotten it doesn't mean that they're not going to like put people on like unpaid leave. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you have to understand it's like they have to look good. Right. And personally, I'm just more interested in this more so just to see the economics. Like, how does this affect the bottom line? for airlines do you want to know what i industries? think i don't think it's just airlines because you've got a lot of people who are the the pilots the employees the air traffic controllers keep in mind a lot of these people came from having served in the u.s military or armed forces right. so one of the things that i saw recently this week on twitter was like they had like this big plane and they had like a window down or something and there was like the the don't tread on us flag so it's like really clear like they've come out and they basically said look we don't want to do this but if we don't do this then how is anybody else going to stand up right so when you think about not being given the freedom of choice it's not about whether or not we're doing this or doing that it's just choice yeah. if if people don't start realizing that until everybody bands together to really kind of back the foundation of what this country was really built on right we're, we're heading down a very slippery slope and it's not just that. Boeing came out and said that they're requiring also, um, I think it's either November or December, their employees to do the same. Um, and then I wonder how are other airlines going to follow up? Now, keep in mind, planets very soon, Sag, Venus is already in Sag. Right. Very soon, planets are going to start moving into Sagittarius and they're going to start kind of enacting the eclipse degrees from the eclipses that we have had, both in Gemini and Sag. So now it's like showtime. Then I think about things that are going on where they're saying they're having drills in elementary schools and middle schools and high schools, just drills where they're having people, military personnel coming in, which is kind of terrifying when you think about your kids being there. Hmm. And then two, I saw something else about, you know, like a 16 year old getting arrested for refusing to wear a mask while going to school and being cited. I mean, like there's some like really fucking scary things that are going on right now, like big time. And it makes me wonder, like, what's going to happen? Because they're basically essentially saying, if we don't have enough nurses, if we don't have enough um, oh, medical right. personnel, shortages. if we yeah. don't have enough, um, you know, people who are willing to go to work, basically, in some of these necessary jobs, they're just sending in the National Guard. So essentially, are we becoming, oh, yeah, wow. like, are we just going to become some fucking police state? Like, where we just essentially have, one thing, one good thing I did see, though, I'm going on a rampage, sorry, is that I did see, I think it was in Southern California, some police department was basically like, I'm not going to enforce this. Oh, yeah, I, I see You saw that, that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the, 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 the uh, what did they call it? It was like the police deputy or like, the, yeah, he's like, I'm not going to enforce it. The, the Southwest Airlines guy, I don't buy that because he was like, well, we're not going to fire them. Doesn't mean you're going to put them on unpaid leave. But really, when you think about it, like if we don't have people who are filling in all of these jobs that we need, we need air traffic controllers. We need people who are going to be flying planes. We need 911 assistants and operators and people who are medics and stuff like that. We need nurses. Kaiser Permanente, as a group, the Nurses Association is getting ready to strike. That's deep. So when you have some of the largest Southern California Nurses Associations coming out basically saying, we want a choice, and they're being told they don't have a job, and then they're just going to send in either military personnel or the National Guard to just start enforcing this stuff. Like, I hope you guys are ready for some of the stuff that's going to start happening because... And I think what this is all leading to is this sense of ownership and more so like going away from privatization because the, the the reason why this really works is you know these private corporations have every right to decide who patronizes their business or not but it, the, the lesson is we got the power so like this is where boycotting comes through this is where there is going to take that you know, time to establish these new, just like that Huntington Beach store that won't let you go in unless you don't have it. Like just so much more, What it's not, not making it about politics, but just more that independence to build your own thing without getting hit by mandates from anybody about anything. Yeah. So uh, I, I like that struggle because it pushes that, but you're still, you know, mentioning something very relevant and, and 
I think that a lot of people are banking on more people to fold and, and give in um, and not necessarily to getting a vaccine, but more so to just to demands, regardless of what they But are. they've allowed the media to carry out their and their to whole give message. This, like, it's, perception it's, it, yeah, this perception like. that a mandate is a law. It was not voted on federally. It was a mandate. So they've come out and they've made comments and they've talked about it and they've basically said, well, this is what we need. And then we've come into this culture where they're shaming people who haven't done that. When in reality, Seriously. at least <laughs> me, most of the people who I've interacted with who have been like a little uneasy and they're like, well, I'm going to wait. It's not that they're anti-vaxxers. It's not really what this is. It's more that these are people coming out going, I just want to see the facts. I want to see the data. I want to wait a little bit longer. I'm a little uneasy. It's frankly disturbing. And I don't think a lot of people were looking into it just some of the data it, that is out there if you go and you look for it that's posted on some of even the federal guideline websites. It's just talking about the fact that we're no longer discussing whether or not it's it's transmittable even if you are vaccinated, whether or not it's, um, you know, we're, we're actually counting the numbers of effects and, and really kind of talking about that publicly. I don't know. I just think that it makes me wonder if it's a business that's that's here to actually make money. What's the real what's the real purpose behind the government getting so heavily involved in this? It's and we clearly know the government has our best interests and you don't want to be like us. Make sure you actually get vaccinated because we don't need YouTube to strike this channel. We're not going to <laughs> any guidelines. We're making sure we're just, you know, supporting out counter opinions. But just to make you sure, sure, you know, on this channel, we fully support all these guidelines we fully support people's ability to get vaccinated and if you want to get vaccinated you should totally get vaccinated. way to support choice you know what i'm saying choice of being it is. educated That's <laughs> it. i'm not going to speculate one way or the other what what freaks me out though is the fact that what's ramping up right now is like this agenda and people have kind of thought like i was crazy when i was like i'm pretty sure lockdowns are going to come back like we're going to see this at the end of the year right around the holidays yeah especially going into like the new year and like wild. this is the new normal so at some point people have to start kind of questioning like what is the purpose and like when when is it over like when is it enough? Nobody's asking questions. I just the or, biggest. But that's the thing like no one's asking and the ones who are asking it's not getting broadcast. They're being silenced. Right. So you're seeing that they're you so, know being taken off social media platforms or you're not getting their alerts. It's giving you this illusion that the majority is saying something when really the majority is saying this but they're making the minority the majority just like. The Bolsheviks, the rise of the Bolsheviks, who were the minority calling themselves the majority. So, I don't know. I think that if you if you go deep enough and you follow what's happening and you follow the trail and you look at what's going on also with the global agenda, some of the things that they're talking about with like, you know, 2030 and the agenda moving towards 2030. Which 2030, we're going to have Uranus conjunct Saturn and a Gemini. Yeah. Closing that. So all of you born with the Saturn conjunct Uranus at the end of Sagittarius, I feel like that generation is going to be, and us too, because we're yeah. right after it. Like, it's going to be really interesting. Well, especially us, because we have that Uranus, Saturn, exactly. Neptune conjunction. Like, I feel right. like we're going to end up creating, like, these, like, super secret, undercover fucking societies. And new where... technology that isn't, like, registered to the state. Right. But, yeah. Something's going to happen. I think about how wild my first Saturn return was, and I just kind of think about the next one that's coming and what's going to happen, or even just the Uranus opposition will be yeah. rather wild. So, trying to stay optimistic, but I'm also like at a point where, like I said, if you guys have any recommendations for any other uh, social media broadcasting or whatever, let me know because I feel like finding another platform to be able to just not even talk about political stuff. Like, I don't really give a fuck about politics. Just have the whatever. freedom to be yeah. like, this is what I see, this is what I think, without the fear of <laughs> building momentum towards creating an audience only to have it taken down because I'm telling the truth. Yeah, or or even worse, because you're joking, because you're not even no, wanting to- No, I'm not to, joking. No, well, I'm not, joking. well, not that you're joking, right? <laughs> but like, what if you're just putting out something to put something out and they're like, oh, we don't like what you put. And now it's like, I didn't even think this would be in trouble. And now it's like, I can't, I now have to be walk on eggshells about what yeah. I put out. And it's just like, but yeah, I'm, she's serious. She ain't playing no games. That's what's up. And no, I mean, you know, I think coming into Scorpio too, we're going to see a lot more exposed. Yeah. That 
have the opposition needed. also to Uranus yeah. and the square to Saturn. too, and it's just yeah. like... Oh. I think that's part of what's going on is Uranus is starting to oppose my son. So there are some people that I like talk mm. about stuff and they're like, you're fucking crazy. And then there's other people that are like, oh shit, you've got a point. True. Right? And I feel like there's like this, there's like this lightning bolt inside of me that's starting to come out that just wants to be like, fuck this system. And like, I can't do that. I mean, I can, but yeah. I can't do that because... Like I said, I really try, like this is like my outlet, you know, but there are some things going on that I'm like, I don't really feel like I'm being completely and totally fully authentic without relaying some of the things that I'm actually seeing. Like go back and look at, I think it was 2017, 2018, the video I did with Lada on Astro Lada's channel, where I was talking about the conjunctions of what was gonna happen in 2019 and 2020. And I was like, this is the shit that's gonna happen in the world. And everybody thought I was crazy. And actually somebody sent me an email and they reached out to me. They were like, I downloaded all the videos that you did. And they were like, the shit that you said happened is happening. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, at the time I was just analyzing the charts. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, you know, fully looking into the future, right. but it makes me just kind of feel like, I don't know, I need to like start some platform for being like this like rogue fucking minority report astrologer or some shit, you know? Straight Sun Pluto style, which I think I is think I need to. underrated and underappreciated. And I mean... Kudos to all the astrologers, us included, who are saying Uranus and Taurus is going to crash financial markets and Pluto and Capricorn is going to see governments collapsing. And like We haven't seen anything yet. And we still haven't seen anything yet. No. Exactly. So no. it's just amazing how, you know, it's all come to pass and we're more in a position to realistically see how this is going to conclude and, and play out. So, I mean, enjoy the show. Hold on to your seats. Yeah, and, and obviously your sovereignty. pay attention to some of the stuff that's happening because I've said this on my channel, but like the astrology now from from really the end of October on, it's like a train. Like it doesn't stop. Like it's right. just going to just keep on keeping on intense. because now we're coming into the third square between Saturn and Uranus, which I think is going to be the big finale. Yep. And then we're going to see the next wave of next year when you know uranus meets with um the north node i think in the summer saturn will square the nodes you next mean year saturn and uranus. i got you i think saturn squares the nodes in march and then i think august is when uh the north node meets with uranus i believe from what i remember that's so gonna be insane that's it's almost like this whole year has been like a dress rehearsal for the hard changes that really come next year Right. And well, we're going to see it's like this year, it's exactly as you said. And this year we generated the energy. And so we're going to see the effects of everything next year. Yeah. And that's when we're going to know what's really happening. That's when we're going to know if certain theories are true or not. That's when we're going to know if, if certain ideologies were correct or not. And, you know, this way it, it doesn't leave it up in the open. You know what I mean? It, it actually is going to prepare you to, to face yeah. the actual meaning and the truth of what's happening. You're really on to something, though, about, you know, I think about some of the astrologers that, that I just know of that are successful in their own right. These are people who have really gone out and created their own platforms, right? They're not relying on YouTube. They're exactly, not relying right, on, right, right. on Instagram. They've gone and they've formulated their websites in a way where they have subscriptions and they have their content and they're putting that out or... They're going and, and they're creating circles in their own like communities where they're right. working with people. And I feel like that's probably that's probably the direction of where I'm going to go. Just so I can say some of the crazy shit that I really exactly. feel the need to say. So that way you still have social media, but it's being used to draw people to what you already have. Right. Instead of just basing it there. And that's cool because that's going to bring more of a resurge. I feel like the best thing that could ever happen to us is for social media to kind of just go out. And then we have to actually be more out in this real life ultimately and take it, our knowledge it makes there. sense right? right i mean a lot of you know the saturn square pluto is going to be about like breaking away from those larger structures mm -hmm. that are controlling and while they may be lucrative like many astrologers can make a ton of money on youtube i mean mm -hmm. you just in just even in with the shadow banners alone like you know a lot of them are just going to get those residual paychecks of just having created this this vast library of content, which is amazing. It takes a lot of work to do that. But um, I think that what separates those who are just kind of living off of that and comfortable from the people who are really thinking about the future is that in the future, knowledge will be something that is valuable. Like I think about, are we going into a world where 
we're not going to be able to get certain books or we're not going to be able to have access to certain courses or lessons or um, just knowledge in general is going to be so um, Much valuable. more valuable, yeah. Right? And so whether you're getting it from a source or you're getting it from a person, in the future, are we going to live in a world where we can just look up anything online? Probably not. Probably not. Right. And so we're, we're now coming into the reverse of what we saw in the dot-com era where, you know, we had Uranus and Aquarius and Saturn was in Taurus and it was a lot of investing into the dot-com and to the internet and there was a lot of money to be made and all of that stuff when the internet really was kind of like in its heyday. But now we've got Uranus and Taurus and Saturn's and Aquarius and we're hearing all of the shit going on. We're like, Facebook's making a fuckload of money, <laughs> not giving a shit whether or not their analytics and things are honorable, wholeheartedly admitting facts coming out in this last month that they're aware that they're putting out ads and things that are really pushing younger people to commit suicide and women to be more likely to have eating disorders. Damn. Right? And they don't give a fuck whether or not the details and the facts of what political figures are putting out for some of their ads are actually true or not. They don't give a shit. Because they're getting paid. Right? Because they're getting paid. Right. So it's like... I don't know. I'm kind of done with the internet this week. <laughs> I mean, who knows what's going to happen next week? The, and that's what I appreciate. Like, yeah, every week is like... Yeah, at least it stays like, interesting. Right. It's like, I've never been... I don't know if it's me getting older or it's just, you know, every week is exciting. Like, what's going to happen today? Like, what's going to happen today? And I've never been one to really keep up with current events, but I'm glued now. And it's yeah. motivating me to get out my rock. See Good. I'm like, I like that. It's... It's motivating me to probably want to like create like this underground astrology society where we just probably <laughs> trade rocks and right. <laughs> fermented fruits and vegetables and, and recipes. <laughs> Crockpot recipe. Fuck. Imagine if the currency moving forward is like online classes. Like you have to share what you know. If we didn't have like a money system, and it's like. Well, I, but what's wrong with that? A functional society could be based off of a bartering system where everybody brings something to the table and right i right. mean in my opinion but you back know. to the basics kind of like how we started. might have to we have to start a garden right oh uh, that would be interesting back to the whole land thing but i mean that's interesting considering people are buying land there's so much land being bought by corporations and yeah like, because they know what's up they know that whoever is maintaining precious land for growth and which I think is kind of weird because I think the future is actually vertical farming because if we do have issues of global warming and other things like it makes sense to be doing this indoors where it might be solar or more efficient or we can actually hmm. really control the environment of what's being grown and we can grow year round but you awesome. know I don't know we gotta ask Bill Gates why he owns so much land mm -hmm, really and once again we have to keep in mind the last time Neptune was in Aries and Uranus was in Gemini, America had a civil war. So I, I just I just like to see all this as a precursor for another conflict, whether it's a civil war or not. We are gonna return to this cycle. We're already in it. Return for, oh yeah. We're already in it. It's already, already been orchestrated. Yeah. The, the division is being created within. The reality is, is whether or not we're getting distracted by the division. And, and how you're positioning yourself for how this will unfold. And I don't wanna say what side you're gonna be on, but how you express yourself through it and get through it instead of stop in hell, get through it. I don't want to call it hell, but I'm really excited about this though, because I feel like this is, there's so, especially in the spiritual community, and I put that in quotes, um, you know, people, people have said all sorts of love and light bullshit. And now to see how, how they're applying that really now is really showing you who's who and like who really practices what they preach so spirituality isn't all love and light you right. can't understand the light without the dark same thing with magical practice bypassing. or anything else yeah you can't spiritually bypass stuff it's like we live in a world of duality like that's how it works masculine feminine light dark i mean positive negative however you want to look at it like we need that contrast to be able to understand where we're going so I don't know. I'm interested to hear how you guys are preparing for some of the stuff that's going on. What insights or revelations have you guys had? Um, what communities online are you guys participating in? I would really like to know. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Right. Yeah. And 
Also, if you haven't joined our membership yet, please make sure you at least join membership when you'll be able to see this episode. You're probably gonna see this after, but you'll be able to see new episodes like this on Saturday instead of Monday. And if you join level three, you can get a card from your girl and your boy. <laughs> you know we you know. we really appreciate your guys' support. Those of you guys who do support the channel, whether you're a subscriber, whether you like, comment, share, it's been really awesome to see this channel grow. We really appreciate yeah. it. Um, and I'm sure we will be back very soon to give you guys more insight on what's going on in the cosmos. Uh, make sure that you stay tuned for that and we will see all of you guys very soon. Take care.